everybody. Several years ago, I made a video of the 10 worst tropes in fantasy books, and guess what? All of those tropes still suck. But I've read a lot more books since then, and I've come across a lot more suckage, so now felt like the perfect time to update that list. Today I'm breaking down 10 more fantasy tropes that I cannot stand. Some of these tropes are problematic and should be retired completely. Others honestly would be fine, except for the fact that writers have done them to death. They're beating that horse with all their might, and I am so bored of it. Thanks for ruining a good thing, asshole. You might agree with some of these points, you might be outraged, but either way, this is my channel, and I do what I want. Now, I won't be repeating any of the tropes from my first video, so if there's a trope you feel like I missed, check out that video, it might be on there. And if there's a trope that I missed in both videos, let me know in the comments below. I wanna hear what really grinds your gear. Now buckle up because it's time for some hard truths about one of my favorite genres. Let's get to it. Before we get started, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Fabled Planet for sponsoring today's video. Fabled Planet is a specialist provider for editing, coaching, and other services for writers of fantasy and sci-fi. If you're looking for feedback on your plot, characters, world building, or other big picture elements of your story, check out their content editing services, which provides detailed reports from expert editors. They also provide copy editing and proofreading services, coaching for beginner writers, and ARC services for published authors. They have tons of free resources and content, including a world building guide and template, an outlining template, fantasy and sci-fi writing prompts, and a blog covering a range of writing topics. Personally, I'm a especially excited to talk about their beta reading services. If you watch my videos, you know beta readers are super important, but they can be pretty hard to find. Fabled Planet's beta reading service provides reliable and prompt feedback from real fantasy and sci-fi readers. Even better, you might be able to get their beta reading service for free. Fabled Planet is currently running a giveaway promotion where one lucky winner is going to walk away with the prize of a free beta reading service. Check out the link in the description below to get in on this giveaway, you don't want to miss it. And even beyond the giveaway, if you are a writer of fantasy or sci-fi, definitely check out Fabled Planet, I have them linked below. This is a platform that is specifically catered for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. Shut Up and Write the Book is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook, so if you need a step-by-step -step guide to writing your book from plan to print, definitely check it out, it's linked below. If dark fantasy romance is more your vibe, check out my best-selling award-winning novels, The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister. You wanna get in on this soon because The Savior's Army is coming out really soon. Now I am breaking down 10 more of the absolute worst tropes in fantasy fiction. Friendly reminder that this list is just my humble but completely correct opinion, and I reserve the right to change my mind. Whether that'll actually happen remains to be seen. Number one. The kingdom has to be ruled by a man. I don't care if the ruler is a dude, but when he has to be a dude, and if he has a female heiress, she has to get married to a dude in order for him to inherit the throne, I'm putting the book down. 90% of fantasy does this. It's old and tired and extremely redundant. Listen, this is a fantasy world. You are literally making up the whole thing. Why are you choosing to repeat the same system of government that has already been written a zillion times. And what's crazy to me is a lot of authors will say, yeah, I know it sucks that the princess has to get married to a man so that he can take the throne, but unfortunately that's just how it is. Yeah, because you made it that way. No one put a gun to your head. You are the reason the princess is stuck in that stupid cliche. Honestly, this complaint isn't entirely about feminism. It's honestly mostly because this system of government has been written so many times. Let's just say there's a reason I wrote Thessin as a matriarchy in The Savior's Champion. I just wanted to see something different, okay? Number two, mates. I don't care if your characters are fated to be together, but must we use the word mates? If you're saying soulmate, that's fine. But mates by itself, as in you are my mate, they sound like dogs. 
which I guess kind of works if you're writing about werewolves. But with fairies or elves or any other fantasy union, it's fucking gross. It just adds a very animalistic element to the relationship. Maybe that's what the author was going for. Maybe animalistic reads as primal to them. To me, it's giving bestiality. It's taking all the sexy out of sex and making it feel like dogs humping in a puppy mill. The faded mates like it rough or do they like it rough? Number three, alphabet soup names. How the fuck are we supposed to pronounce this name? Or this name? Sure, we know how to pronounce the first one because it eventually became a TV show, but I swear to God, there was no one in this entire universe who read the book and got it right the first time. And it's not just completely unpronounceable names, it's also annoying when a writer takes a real name and then just spells it funny. Her name isn't Faith, it's Faith. Why? What was the reason? It's giving white Midwestern suburban mom. His name isn't Jackson, it's Jackson. Her name isn't Cameron, it's Cameron. I don't know if you're trying to create the McKinley Kaylee Ray vibe, but that's exactly what you're doing. And I'm not saying you should stick with generic names. I love unique names and names from other cultures. But if you're inventing a name with 27 vowels, it's time to calm down. Save the insanity for your magic system. Number four, dirty sex. Literally dirty sex. Like they're fucking up against a tree in the woods. They haven't bathed for the entire duration of the book and now they're all up in each other's holes. Bitch, you know that dick stinks. What person in their right mind would want to put a filthy wiener in their mouth? Can you imagine? <laughs> and can we circle back to the tree fucking? Why is everyone in fantasy books humping against trees? That sounds painful as hell, also really messy. Imagine the bark in your butt crack and the bugs. What about the fucking bugs? I know you're not supposed to think about this stuff. It's fantasy, it's not real, but my mind is going there. Have you read a fantasy novel where the characters are literally fucking in the snow? I have. How does the guy even get hard in those conditions? Won't they die of hypothermia? Lots of stuff in fantasy books doesn't have to make sense, but the sex at the very least should be plausible and not stinky. I don't want to be thinking about how much the hero's balls reek while he's clapping cheeks. Number five, mentors. Everyone's favorite fantasy character is my least favorite fantasy character. Mentors are boring. I'm sorry. I'm not actually sorry. There's just rarely any variety to them. They're usually old, wise white men who say old, wise white things and it's all very old and very wise and very white and very male. You've lost my interest. Plus, we all know the mentor's gonna die. How else will the hero learn to fend for himself? I honestly feel like stories are a lot more interesting without a mentor because it raises the stakes. No one is there to help the main character. It's up to them to screw up and learn from their mistakes. I just think mentors make things too easy and honestly the characters themselves are just same thing, different book. How many Gandalfs do we really need? Number six, this entire fantasy race is evil. Obviously, racism is a real thing, and it's not unbelievable for two fantasy races to hate each other. But there's a difference between elves hating the Fae and believing them to be an evil race versus all of the Fae actually being a wholly evil race. Sure, maybe the Fae government has goals that directly contradict the interest of the elves. And maybe there are genetic elements that give different fantasy races unique traits. For example, in a lot of Fae mythology, the fairies cannot lie. But evil isn't a simple personality trait. It's the result of an amalgamation of both inside and outside forces. Basically, to label every single person within a unique fantasy race as evil just comes off as lazy writing. It shows a lack of thought and characterization, plus an overall lack of understanding regarding relationships between different cultures. It's fine if elves hate the Fae, but opinion isn't synonymous with fact. Number seven, I had no idea I was a magical being. Being. Listen, I love a big reveal. I love secrets, I love lies, I eat that shit up. What kills me is when a character doesn't know their own identity, despite an overwhelming amount of evidence. It's one thing for a character to ignore the signs around them, but in this case, the signs are literally on and in their own body. You've got scars on your back from where your wings used to be. You have literally experienced magic your entire life. How has it never occurred to you that you are a magical creature? You're doing magic. Make it make sense. 
The characters are usually in denial. Oh, I'm not magical. That was just a weird coincidence. Bitch, you shot flames out of your hands. What more evidence do you need? This trope doesn't have legs to stand on, and I don't know why it's so prevalent, because it doesn't make sense. If there weren't any signs, I'd buy it, but if the character is regularly reading other characters' thoughts, bitch, come on. Number eight, regurgitated Dungeons and Dragons. I'm about to piss a lot of people off. I don't like Dungeons and Dragons. <gasps> yeah, I said it. Honestly, it just doesn't appeal to me. The brand of fantasy it's giving just isn't my jam. And if you're into D&D, that's totally your prerogative, but it's really obvious when writers base their books off of their D&D sessions. The story is usually old school fantasy. It's very rigid. There's a lot of self-inserting. There's also a lot of nonsensical story elements and characterization that's probably fun for a game, but just totally inappropriate for a published novel. But more than anything, the stories meander. It's possible to use D&D for inspiration for a novel, but to regurgitate it role by role is a fucking mess. Novels are supposed to follow a specific story structure. Use that structure for the love of God. I know you're emotionally attached to your characters and your sessions, but that doesn't mean they fit seamlessly into fiction. Number nine, magical tattoos. There's nothing wrong with tattoos in fiction. I actually think they offer a lot of variety and realism, but magical tattoos specifically have been done to death. Cassandra Clare made it popular, and then Sarah J. Mass turned it into a fucking frenzy. Now literally every other new fantasy release has at least one character with magical tattoos. Let's be real, he's usually a guy, probably has dark hair, and those tattoos are on his chest and shoulders. Tell me you're trying to replicate the Bat Boys without telling me you're trying to replicate the Bat Boys. And I get it, fictional tattoos are hot. I say fictional because we've all seen some real life tattoos that were pretty terrible. But there are other ways to make your characters hot. And what's wrong with regular tattoos that aren't made of fairy dust or special powers? Why can't a character get tatted to honor their fantasy race or some other shit? Like I said, this trope isn't bad to its core, it's just the fact that everyone's doing it and they're all doing it the exact same way. Write something different, please. And last but not least, number 10, the Sausage Fest. This is annoying in any book, but I've found it's especially common in sci-fi and fantasy. You've got a ratio of about 20 male characters for every one female character. And if by chance you have more than one female character, say two female characters, best believe those two ladies are never gonna end up in a scene together. This is such outdated, unrealistic, poorly conceived storytelling. And you'd think it'd be left behind in the Tolkien era, but people are still whipping out all these boys clubs books. What year is it? It's honestly just embarrassing at this point. You can claim it's not intentional, but how did you accidentally exclude 50% of the population? Sounds like something a dumbass would do, which I guess is better than being a misogynist, but either way, there's no winning here. Your book still sucks. So that's all I got for you today. Thanks again to Fabled Planet for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you are writing fantasy or sci-fi, you definitely want to check them out. Their site is catered for you. And be sure to enter their beta reader service giveaway. I have it linked below. Definitely get on it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. Shut Up and Write the Book is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook, so if you want a step-by-step -step guide to writing your book from plan to print, definitely check it out. It's linked below. If you like dark fantasy romance with none of these tropes, I promise, check out The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister, and you want to check them out soon because The Savior's Army is on its way. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and BookBub, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye! Hey, this is Nick, the voice of Tobias and the narrator for The Savior's Champion, written by our Jenna. If you enjoy her writing advice, or if you want to find out about her publications, then you know what to do. Click the subscribe button, ding the bell, and you'll get notified every single time she puts up a video or she goes live. Now what are you waiting for?